That was audio from the brand new movie Sully, starring Tom Hanks, directed by Clint Eastwood in theaters right now. You could go see it at the Palms if you wanted to. One of the stars of that movie, Mike O'Malley, is on the MPW Digital TV Celebrity Hotline. Let's grab him right now. Mike, hey man. Thanks for making time for me this morning. I know you got a lot of people trying to squeeze in your time there. Yeah, man. Well, you're definitely somebody that I've wanted to talk to for a while, so I appreciate it, buddy. Thanks, man. So uh, I haven't seen it yet, but I have every intention to. We have this brand new movie theater right down the the block from the radio station, and Sully premiered last night. And Mike, this looks uh, this looks great. I want you to talk about that experience with Clint Eastwood as a director. Um, he he makes great movies, and this looks like another one. Is that safe to say? Yeah, it's. I think what's so great about this movie is that any American, and well, anybody in the world, not just an American, but anybody who flies, doesn't really think about on a day-to-day basis, you know, they just get on their seat and they're like, are we going to be delayed? Are we going to get it there? Are we going to get there? And and here's a movie about a guy who, under extreme circumstances, made very quick decisions. Uh, those quick decisions saved a lot of lives. And this is, you know, Captain Sullenberger, played by Tom Hanks. And I think Clint Eastwood has just done a great movie, made a great movie about a regular man that people can relate to. It's so hard when you do a movie, you're always thinking about, how do we put the audience in the shoes and in the emotions of the characters so that they understand what the characters are going through and they relate to the characters? But, of course, anybody who flies or anybody who's flown can imagine what it's like to be a passenger on the plane. And anybody who you know has been on a plane can also understand this incredible pressure put on the pilots and the flight attendants to take care of those people once the plane flight goes wrong. Right. And and Mike, I don't have I wouldn't say that I have a fear of flying, but it's not my favorite thing to do. Um and a year ago my wife and I were catching a flight from Denver back to Chicago to the, to then come back to Iowa and we were delayed because of weather and the the takeoff was rough. So, yeah, I think that uh that this movie is going to capture what those moments can be like. I mean, obviously we made it safely. Um, but for for that man, for that 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 captain on that flight to make that landing safely and then get thrust into the spotlight, and I think that's another part of the movie that's going to be well represented is because people that fly airplanes or have regular jobs for a living, they're never really prepared to be put on the Today Show. You know what I mean? Right, and the, and the appetite is insatiable because we're looking for stories that remind us that. In times of distress, people can behave heroically or kindly. It's not that people don't uh, understand or relate to everyday people being kind and good to other people, because that's what happens most of the time, right? I mean, you you go to the grocery store and people are nice; they don't punch you in the face. You know, you you know, you're driving to work. Most people are just driving and going to work. They're not running their car into you. You know, but when Suddenly, something happens, and there's great distress, 
and you think to yourself, well, how would I react in this circumstance? Would I be heroic? Would I be cowardly? Would I, would I be overcome with panic? Would I think of myself first or others first? Mm-hmm. What would I do? And that's part of this movie that, that, you know, that's what you're thinking about. What you're discussing in terms of the media, I mean, just imagine if anybody, if, you know, when we see this happen again and again, it's, you know, you're at, uh, you know, there's some, there's a shooting that happens at a school or something, and mm-hmm. everyday normal people have to do these heroic things and and stand up and, and do the right thing and care for others. And, and I think this movie though not a movie that deals with violence that I just referenced. I'm not trying to, you know, um, sure. equate the two. But, but you know, that kind of sudden fame and fortune that happens, not fortune, but fame, mm-hmm. um, you know, that, that, that's, it's, it's insatiable, and you can't really stop it from happening. You've got to feed the beast, you know. And there's a couple mm-hmm. of scenes in this movie where there's just all of the, all the interviewers and all the cameras and all the photographers are outside, and we've seen this in countless movies, you know, people walking through a crowd of photographers. It's just the way it is. You can't stop it. And until you feed the beast and answer some of the questions, they're going to they're gonna keep asking them. Yeah, without a doubt. I want to pivot for a second. Uh, if you're just tuning in, that's Michael Malley on Twitter, the Michael Malley. When it comes to what gives you the most satisfaction, you've hosted, you've had success writing, and acting. What is your preference nowadays, Mike? Well, I, I, you know, having gone to see the movie last night, it's, it's a real thrill to be on a part of a team and be in a movie like uh, Sully. I think that what I have three young children, and as a writer, I like to be in control of the entire creative process because it's an immersive experience. And from for myself, I write on a show now. I created a show. Uh, that's on stars called Survivor's Remorse, and LeBron James is one of the executive producers. Wow! And that's a, and you know, that's a thing where I'm involved intimately in the final, you know, the initial creative part, but I'm also involved in all of the decisions. And so I feel as if my day is filled with, you know, real creativity. When you're an actor, you have to just, you know, you have to go where they tell you to go, and you have to say what they tell you to say, and you just got to be happy that you're involved in the project. Of course, that's I am happy to be involved in something like Sully, but it's it's a completely different experience. One is an interpretive experience, which is the acting. The other is a real creative experience. And that's not to say that there aren't actors that have really creative experiences, but you know, when you're a writer, you're starting with a blank page, and when you're an actor, when you're an actor, you're starting with a script. I love it. And you've had such good success with it. Um, Two questions before we get done. So I grew up outside of Chicago in the suburbs, and I've been a Cubs fan for a while. Uh, your Boston, yeah. your Boston, your Boston Red Sox finally got it done a couple years ago. Do you think, Mike, that because here's the thing, I don't want to say that if the Cubs win the World Series this year, I won't care about them as much. But I just want it to happen so I don't have to devote my time to being a diehard Cubs fan. Does that make sense? I 100% does. I want I want you to know I grew up as a Red Sox fan. I was a massive fan. And when the Red Sox went on their little run before they won the World Series, in fact, in 2003 when they lost to the Yankees, uh, you know, I'm a grown man. I got three children. I almost couldn't move, right? <laughs> it's like we invest ourselves emotionally in these teams. And one of the reasons we do it is because there's no shared experience anymore um, between people. You know, we... Either we don't go to the same, you know, churches, or we don't, you know, support the same political candidates, or, you know, but there's a baseball team, an entire city can embrace a sport, a football team, an entire entire city. It links you with your parents. It links you with the people that you grew up with. You're getting back in touch. It's something to, you know, gather around and watch, and it's something that's been around for a long, long time. So there's all these other things that are tied up with it that you don't realize that really have nothing to do with baseball mm-hmm. and just have to do with family and friends. And it stink, losing stinks, and you see other people you know, succeed and have that elation, and you just want to you know, glimpse that and touch that for a second. And I'll tell you that when the Red Sox won in 2004, it was just wonderful. And part of it was just because you know, there's so much... Um, strife in life that to be able to look at the scoreboard and say, okay, by all measurements, and baseball is such a pure game, we won this game, 
and we're winners, and we can say that. And I've stuck through this team when they had heartbreaking losses, and I've spent a ridiculous amount of time, you know, but, you know, baseball is, is, is like, you know, seeing art unfold. You just don't know how the story is going to unfold. And uh, so if they win, you'll love it. You'll, you'll still want them to win more, but you will not be as immersed as you were now. And that's a good thing. I, oh, I can't wait. I hope it happens. Michael Malley, the movie is Sully. The last quick question in 30 seconds. I had like six people want me to ask you. When you get done with the show Guts, do you get a piece of the aggro, Craig, or however you I say I have one. You do? Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> For a lot of people, I'm just going to dispel this myth right now. Uh-huh. Right, a lot of people you know, want to know about Nickelodeon Guts and whether or not more Quirk and I ever had a romantic relationship. <laughs> More, more Quirk played the referee right. stuff on Guts. And um, no, it didn't happen. A lot of people want to know that we had a love child. It didn't happen. Um, and um, But we can start the rumor right now that our love child on that we made while doing Guts is Justin Bieber. <laughs> oh, yes, yeah, somehow is Canadian. I love it. <laughs> right? It makes total sense. And- well, yeah, because more Quirk moved to Canada right. to the pregnancy. <laughs> Oh, my gosh. Mark Summers has to be the godfather. Listen, buddy, I appreciate it. Uh, I know Sully's... Great chat with you, man. Yeah, Sully's going to be number one this weekend. Continued success, buddy, all right?